Mr. Ed here. Today is February 16th, uh, 2017. It's about one o'clock in the afternoon. It's about 60 degrees out here. I'm on the back porch of the, the Ambrose Honey House because it's such a nice day out here. I really just wanted to come out here and do the, the little job that we're going to do today outside. Hopefully the bees won't be bothering us too much. And uh, what we're going to be doing is taking our block of wax that we uh, rendered last week, two, actually it's two weeks ago almost, and we're going to go ahead and um, melt this down and apply it to our uh, foundations for our, our boxes. So follow along with me and by the blessings of God, we'll get this block melted down and put onto some frames and put it out in the boxes and let the bees build it out. Here we go. Well, here's all I need to uh, get this job done. Our block of wax, my little crock pot, and the tools of destruction. What's going to happen is I want to take that block and I'm going to start breaking it apart and taking all little uh, pieces of wax, chunks of wax, and just put them in the uh, crock pot right there. And once I get that crock pot full of the big chunks, turn it on and let it all melt down. So let's go ahead and bust up that big old block of wax. We got our wax broke up and uh, deposited in our crock pot. Now we're just going to go ahead and let it melt down. It's um, probably take about an hour or so. We'll melt it down. And just a warning, um, that crock pot, when you uh, say, oh, I'm going to melt some wax, you'll never cook another red bean in that thing again. Don't do like my buddy Randy, using the wife's good kitchen utensils and thinking that he can bring them back and she won't notice. When you use anything for bees, it's strictly for bees. Don't follow the example of the 628 dirt rooster. So just keep that in mind when you're doing this. All right, let's check back about an hour. Well, it's been more than an hour. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's been more than a day. It's been two days since we uh, started, since I started trying to melt that wax. Things got really busy around the wood shop and had to come and do work in the wood shop instead of playing over the honey hut. Uh, so today I'm going to, Saturday, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and actually start uh, the, the application of the wax onto the uh, foundations. But before I actually um, start doing that, uh, I'd like to show you what a little misadventure that happened this morning. <laughs> Check this one out. Well, folks, this is, uh, this is what you call a wax disaster. <laughs> uh, I was uh, foolishly trying to lift that chunk of wax out of the crock pot. Um, that it attached itself to the roller and uh, as I'm lifting it out uh, then the uh, wax <laughs> block um, fell back into the um, wax and then splashed the wax all over <laughs> the table the floor oh and uh, me <laughs> be careful that stuff is really hot uh, we'll clean this up. Well, the process that I'm going to be doing uh, today is, is applying uh, our melted wax right here onto uh, cellrite foundation, this plastic cellrite foundation. Um, this is the, the, the foundation that I use. Um, I get this stuff from Man Lake. I, I like it. It's really heavy stuff. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is taking the wax and rolling and I'm applying on it. And once, once the uh, uh, wax is applied to the foundation, this hard plastic foundation, it will um, then be, just go ahead and just snap them right into the, into the, um, into the frame right here, and then it'll be ready to go, go put in the box. Now the reason, um, there's, there's all kind of frames that you can use, you can buy solid plastic frames um, with a plastic foundation, um, you can, uh, and then, or you can buy the, uh, the wooden frame and put wax foundation inside of it but for me I, I just prefer to use the wooden frame and the, uh, the, the cell right foundation to, uh, to go inside of it. I found that even even with the wax moth they, they cannot destroy this this uh, plastic stuff right here they can you know tear up all the comb on side on the front of it but they can't destroy this so you can actually reuse um, your, your foundation whereas if it's uh, a wax foundation they just eat the whole thing is destroyed so this is the one I, I really like the feel of wood and as opposed to plastic and uh, the plastic foundation once you apply the wax to it 
the bees will get on. Now, if you don't apply the wax to this foundation, the bees are somewhat reluctant to, to get on it. So I, it comes with uh, some wax on it, but I will cover the whole entire face, both faces of the, of the foundation with wax. And then they really do uh, jump on this thing, especially if you're using your wax. That smell, the bees are really attracted to it. It takes um, seven pounds of honey to produce one pound of wax. So um, I just figure I'd rather let the bees go into honey production than wax production. And so I'll go ahead and apply the, um, the wax to these foundations to give them a jump start where they don't have to produce the wax and they can easily uh, start just drawing the wax out that's already on the frame instead of manufacturing it themselves. They can just draw it out, make the cells, and then start putting honey in those cells, which is what we're all after. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start applying the, um, the wax to the foundation. Now, since my wax is already melted, I'm just going to go ahead and I use a four inch uh, foam roller on this stuff. And I simply just dip it in the uh, crock pot and I'm just going to spread it onto the, uh, to the frame right here, just like this. And I, I do apply it rather liberally. I'm not uh, too concerned about having too much. And I want to make sure I get it all the way to the edges. You want to make sure of that because whatever you don't put wax on, the bees will skip those spots. So, and it only takes a few seconds and it's dry. There you go, you see it. And once it's dry like that, I'll just flip it over and do the other side. And that's it. The wax is applied. So I've only got about 99 more of these to do and then put them in the box. So I'm going to get busy with that right now. Well, we've got about 50 of them done right there. Got the crock pot all loaded up again for, uh, to melt it for their next batch. And if you can hear in the background, that's the church bell. So I'm headed to mass, then lunch, and then by that time, this wax will be melted down and we'll finish up. So I'll see you after lunch. Now that I got that little stack of uh, foundation is done right here. I'm going to start putting them uh, actually into the frames on the boxes. They just pop right into the, the grooves in there. That's all there is to it. All right, then I'm done, and I'm probably got about another 25 or 30 right there. So I'm gonna finish up those right now. But before I start putting more wax on on the foundations, I'm gonna um, start applying wax to uh, my top bar hives. Uh, I've decided to to build a top bar hive and and uh, go ahead and see how it, it works for us out here at the Abbey, and uh, I've kind of like modified it to you know the way I think it should be done. And uh, so I'm gonna give you a picture of, of what that looks like. Okay, this is my little project right here. This is uh, my modified Langstroth. And uh, it's got, I think, 26 or 27 frames in it. Um, it's just, you know, cypress body to it. And uh, you see that little line of pins right there. Those are where the sides are attached to the um, bar itself, the top bar itself. And then on the inside, you can see how they line up on the inside. And as you notice, there is no screen bottom on uh, this box. And there is a reason I, I decide not to put a screen bottom on this. So because my whole idea, the whole premise of what I'm doing here is uh, mimicking uh, the inside, um, the floor space between uh, ceilings um, on a first and second uh, story building. I notice that when I do removals of the beehives, how um, healthy the beehives are, and um, there's no screen bottoms on the on in those houses. So I'm I'm just copying um, that idea 
into this. And also the, um, the walls of this box, um, again, copying the um, floor joy space, is that they're, they're actually uh, two and a half inches thick. And that's because I have my uh, piece of three quarter inch plywood on the inside as well as on the outside. And then there's a one inch um, insulation board in between those two pieces of plywood. This is just an experiment, see how it's going to work. But I'm going to play with this one. So right now I'm going to go ahead and start applying the, the wax to the little triangular pieces and then go ahead and nail them onto them. And what I'm getting ready to do right now is to apply um, these little triangular pieces. I know the camera doesn't show it right now, but I've got a stack of them in front of me. And these are the, the pieces, see, they're triangular shaped, so they come to a point. And that point will then be the center line um, where the, the bees will then start putting, um, building their comb. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll apply wax to these bars right here. This, this one right here would be the long bar. And then these shorter ones are the, are the side. I've already cut them to length, so when I put them onto the uh, frame, they're mitered in there and they're just going to sit right in there so that the center line lines up. And then the wax will be applied to both sides of this. And, and on the two sides right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start applying the wax right now. Here's all our pieces all waxed up. And now I'm gonna grab, grab and start putting, uh, nailing them onto their frames, onto their bars. And there you have it. It's ready to go in the box. So let me go ahead and do these other 25 of them. All right, well that about does it for today. It's a little after four o'clock and uh, wound up with 70 of the plastic foundations that we've got wax spread on and 25 or 26 on the top bar hive um, done. So all that's done. Um, I'm out of, get, of, of wax in the uh, crock pot there. I'm definitely out of steam. And uh, so I'm, I'm ready to call it, call it a day. But before I get out of here, I want to um, sign off with, with the, the little beekeepers uh, section. And this one brings us out to sunny California, where we're going to highlight Sharon Pearson. She's been keeping bees out there for five years. She lives in Contra Costa uh, County, which is just outside of San Francisco. And um, she tells me that the, the stone fruit trees and the almond trees are blooming out there right now. So it's always good for the bees. She also asked if I'd mention her bee club, which is the Mount Diablo Beekeepers Association. And they have 400 members in that association. That's a lot of, lot of folks out there. And she said that um, the members go to schools and 4-H clubs uh, to help ensure that there's future beekeepers um, out there in California. So that's a great thing. So Sharon, thank you for sending the pictures. If you'd like to send some pictures of your, your hives, your bees, flying out, do whatever you do in your bee yard, I'd love to be able to show them all. But for right now, today, we're going to wrap this thing up. So thank you for watching. Keep on watching, and I'll be making more. God bless. Mr. Ed, I'm out of here until the next one. Mm -hmm.